event, a live embedded uh, event. Um, and today I will speak about uh, some use case where privacy matters in an Internet of Things uh, um, architecture. So let me introduce myself first. So I'm a professional open source engineer. I used to work uh, for big industry players like uh, Tizen Operating System for Intel. Then I work on Yocto on automotive project. And uh, then I was able to join a Samsung open source group. And I, one of my contribution is uh, a contribution to the IoT framework for interoperability, interoperability in, in, in IoT. So currently I'm a contributor in open source project. I'm part of Mozilla web program involved into a IoT project and I'm so contributing to Debian. I used to contribute to Qt and also the NetX RTOS uh, system. So here is my address. If you want to contact me at this address, pearl.org, you will find a lot of kind of uh, channel to reach me and I'm currently available. So if my work uh, are inspiring you, let feel free to contact me maybe uh, we can do things together. So I'm based in France. I can uh, answer a question in uh, French if you want also at the end. And uh, yeah, you can link me and see some updates about what I'm doing. So I shared a lot of demonstrations, some uh, videos and some updates about uh, my uh, contribution in the open source. So let's get back uh, to the past and where try to identify where Internet of Things uh, began. So I think it started around the year uh, 1984. Nice. That's an interesting date. But uh, let me share some experiments some students uh, made with a DIY cock bonding machine. So it looked like this. And uh, I believe those are the, the people who set it up. And it was connected to the internet uh, using uh, this kind of hack. So that's pretty. Uh, um, similar to what people are using today with Raspberry Pi and connecting probably some relays to uh, for the dispenser. And it has so is some kind of UX because using the old finger protocol, you can check how many items are into the machine using uh, a command line. And uh, what happened uh, today? So, okay, there was a lot of product on the market and uh, let's see um, if uh, our promise are really uh, achieved. So, we, do we have today a lot of interoperability or is it just a, a bunch of silos? Uh, yeah. Is um, the security model uh, respecting also privacy? This means if you have everything in the cloud, is it uh, maybe it's safer than having some device uh, people can get into it, but uh, at the same time, it can have some side effects on privacy. So what we have today, usually the, the regular uh, business is to uh, connect the device to a cloud operator that will uh, give you to the user an app to run on his mobile phone to control his device through the cloud backend. So now I have some open question for, it's uh, about IoT, but it can be also applying to any things online. So how strategic is your home or your family or just your health or basically just your data? So that can describe your life, isn't it? Uh, what are you gaining with this kind of system and what are you losing? That's a question uh, I I think it wants to be asked. Um, who should you trust or delegate uh, your system? What about uh, data harvesting, collecting your personal data and selling it uh, online to other um, ad, uh, business? Uh, what happened in case of data leakage? And uh, something you should keep in mind that everything is costing money to run it. So this means that somebody has to pay for it. And uh, how reliable is, is it? Uh, if a system too much connected to the internet can fall down, what? how do you survive this situation? Um, is uh, today regulation or the cybersecurity uh, involved enough to protect uh, your strategic um, assets? Uh, what about uh, just uh, resilience? I'm talking about what could happen in 10 years and uh, what uh, can happen regarding uh, your digital sovereignty. So this can, some questions that could uh, apply to big organization, for instance. So in the end, I believe that we have uh, some kind of uh, 
dilemma between uh, the technical answer and the cultural background of people making decisions. So I'm, I think it's just a question, that's a kind of choice we are doing every day. So yeah, keep this in mind and try to, uh, to see what's much the best of your needs. So hopefully, uh, let me mention about some regulations. So I'm French and so based in Europe and we have this uh, GDPR uh, that's a big text, but uh, there is something that uh, I've noticed that can be really interesting is this article 25, which try to um, convey service operator to run their system with privacy by design and by default. That's really uh, something interesting and it can be a really good opportunity for, for free open source software and communities because privacy is part of our community DNA. So that's the kind of value we are pushing since the beginning probably. So the challenge we have today is how to do uh, Internet of Things with privacy. So we have we want to do something user centric and obviously, obviously user data centric and how can it be uh, decentralized to be more resilient. So let me now mention some privacy by design principles. That's something that's been proposed uh, many years ago, but it's worth uh, to mention them. So the first one is try to be proactive and not reactive. This means try to fix the problem before that occurs. Uh, privacy should be the default. So it should not be an option and it should be part of your design at the beginning. And um, for this, um, you can, I lost the focus. Um, so yeah, in the end, your user should have the seamless experience if uh, privacy is well hundred or bad hundred, it, it should be the same. So it's quite difficult for people to know what is going on from the UI. So if you are um, committing to provide privacy, that's something, that's the kind of trust you can uh, get with uh, users. And went to security, of course, because if your privacy is not secure, that's a problem. Visibility and transparency, this means uh, keep it open. This means open implementation, if it's software, openness uh, of the, the, what the, when the trouble are, are occurring, what are the fallback plans and so on. So respect uh, users and keep it user centric. So you can find more detail on this uh, link. Um, it's not a consensual pro proposal, but uh, I said, I think it was interesting to get the idea. So now let me mention about uh, some technical so, um, response to this. Uh, I believe the web is a good platform to achieve this kind of uh, uh, problem because uh, the web itself has been designed for interoperability. So it's built on standard and open source software. Uh, most of uh, what we have today on the internet is made with free software. It's uh, decentralized. It means you can have many, many servers. And uh, you have uh, something really interesting is that we have some kind of trusted uh, runtime because of the application is running inside the browser and it's uh, some kind of container before the container we have in the Linux kernel, we have some kind of isolation. Of course, it's our agnostics. This means you can move from one, one device to another and the UI is rich enough to create a nice application and you can also provide seamless uh, experience using progressive web apps, this means on your mobile phone, you can add an application as a, as a native application. And if you click on it, it will open your browser in full screen. This means you have the same user experience. And of course it's programmable. So we have all kinds of technology like a REST API for um, making web services. We can also have real time uh, uh, connectivity using web sockets. So, so people at uh, W3C are trying to propose something called the Web of Things, which is a working group. We try to see how the web technology can be uh, useful in an IoT context. So they are proposing uh, some standards. They are not reinventing the wheel because there are a lot of standards already on the web, like uh, JSON, for instance, for description. Uh, there are some works uh, regarding uh, semantics, uh, some WebSocket I just mentioned before. Uh, so everything we already have can be reused, but some things are missing, like uh, uh, some kind of common semantics or unification of uh, description about uh, smart things. So this um, smart device. So this, they are working on a proposal and now it's a recommendation since this year. And uh, you can get some all the detail on this address. 
and also uh, there are some open source implementation like uh, Mozilla Web Things, which is an ongoing effort. This is what I'm going to explain today. So Web Things, uh, it's a smartphone platform born in uh, Mozilla Emerging Technology Lab. It has been designed from the beginning with privacy in mind, and it's using a simplified model compared to the, what the W3C is doing. So in the end, uh, there is some hope to converge into something that uh, match uh, the use case uh, for the smart home and what the W3C is trying to promote uh, to in a generic way. So the project is built, uh, is composed about a framework to build uh, web things. So web things are basically just uh, HTTP server, they are standalone device, and they are talking REST API and you can just update, create uh, some properties and trigger some action to the device or listen to action from the device. Um, the key point of the, this project is a gateway software. So it's uh, an endless application where uh, we which, uh, try to connect all these things together and to provide all the functionality to control all these things together and try to provide a rich UI for the user and try to also do some automation. And if you are going to the GitHub project, you can download the pre-release version. So it's something expected to be released in the coming days. Um, so here is a, just a picture that's explaining uh, what we have on the right. So this is a typical application, the typical uh, smart home uh, approach. So we have all your device home, of course. They are connected somewhere on the cloud and your, your smartphone is acting as a remote and you can, can control your device uh, using an application, probably many applications because many devices are trying to um, um, isolate uh, your user into its ecosystem. And what we have on the left is a similar uh, approach, but all the data stay home and there is no cloud involved. The only option you can get uh, access to using the, the internet is just by creating a, a tunnel which can connect to your device uh, from the outside. So, but if you are staying home, you can connect directly to your gateway software. So the, the WebSync gateway, so as I said, it's a uh, web application and the headless server, it stay inside your uh, home network. It will run inside your home network. So you are um, in charge about uh, uh, deploying it. There is nobody else involved. It's easy to deploy because uh, we are supporting a reference board, which is a Raspberry Pi. You, the project is providing a SD card image. So you can just dump to the to SD card, plug into the Raspberry Pi, turn it on, and it will ask you a couple of questions to set it up. And if you are a Linux hacker, you can also deploy using a, uh, some packages or just reboot from scratch or use uh, a Docker, or Docker image. That's something uh, it's also supported by the project. So the WebSync gateway trying to connect uh, all the WebSyncs together. So we have a kind of uh, star uh, architecture. So the gateway is at uh, the center of the star and all the devices are uh, each on each uh, branch. And uh, to make it useful for the user, we are providing a user interface where people can just trigger on and off uh, devices and also uh, do some basic automation and logging uh, what uh, is going on inside your home if you want to, for, to to analyze it later. But it doesn't stop here because it has been designed to be extensible by design. So it's supporting uh, some kind of add-ons to support a lot of uh, other devices or online services. So privacy is the core of the project. Uh, everything run in your own network. You can discover the device using some uh, MDNS uh, request. The same thing you are probably using on, on Linux using uh, ZeroConf, for instance. Um, device can be shared also to other applications. We are, you can control them from the gateway using REST API or WebSocket if you need a real time connectivity and if you need to have some uh, control about uh, users. We can you can issue some web tokens for each class of device. So this means maybe some application can control some device, but maybe your kids are 
allow, for instance, to turn on and off the light, but maybe not play with a washing machine, for instance. Security is under at the gateway level. Uh, the gateway runs the same network of your devices, and data stay in, on the gateway, so it's at the edge, not, not cloud are involved yet. Optionally, you can uh, open a remote access using a, a tunnel. So it's using a, a Lethon script a certificate for HTTPS, and package gate is a software used for opening the tunnel. Um, now let me show about uh, a very basic example how to create uh, a web thing. So there are several uh, uh, libraries. So here is a JavaScript one for the node uh, um, interpreter. So if you clone the source code and you run the simplest thing, which is just a switch, uh, it will uh, run a server. And if you make a, a request on the default endpoint, you have the description about the thing. So the thing is uh, using uh, a schema to describe what it is composed of. It had some. It is a, a set of capability, and uh, each capability has specific uh, properties. So, like uh, the on-on switch, has the on properties, which is a boolean, just to turn on and off the switch. So that's uh, the basics uh, to define what is uh, our thing. So if you make a, a curl, uh, an HTTP query on the thing itself. Uh, it will return uh, the value of the thing. So the endpoint is property slash on, and it, the result is a value which is on set to true. So if you want to turn off your thing, you can just uh, make a HTTP put request on the same endpoint. Uh, you pass a JSON uh, a structure which is setting it off, and it will set off uh, at accordingly. So this is a very basic, uh, the minimal one. If you want to create uh, like a light bulb, it is composed of a switch, obviously, but probably it has a more, um, more, uh, um, the focus is gone on my screen. Okay. So if you are creating a light, a light uh, bulb, you probably have an on, on switch, but you can also have a user uh, properties like the color. So from the UI of uh, the WebSync dashboard, you can control each property is using a, a different kind of widget. So that's something user-friendly. You don't need any apps. That's something you can run just on your browser. If it's running on your phone or whatever device that can have a screen, you can interact with it. Now I'll mention about add-ons. So today we have over 130 add-ons. That's a pretty lot. Uh, most of them are coming from the community, but let me mention about uh, a few just to give you an idea about what can be done. So we have um, virtual web things. So basically, they are just a stub uh, device. We can just uh, use them to uh, simulate uh, the things. So if you don't have uh, any device to get started, that's something really useful. We have a URL adapter, which is discovering all the web things in your home network, like the one I just shared before. So you can create uh, your device yourself using uh, your favorite uh, language. We are supporting uh, um, Arduinos, uh, C, C, C++, uh, JavaScript, Rust, and so on. But you can also support uh, other devices, uh, something you can find on the market, because some of them are using standard protocol like ZigBee or Z-Wave, Bluetooth, also on Vive camera, and so on. So it's easy to map uh, all those devices to, like if there were native web things, you just need to translate the protocol. But it doesn't stop here because we can do a lot of things like uh, creating uh, some kind of uh, things hosted on the gateway. Like uh, if you want to put some sensor on the gateway, I made an adapter called the generic sensor adapter. This means you can monitor the temperature without building an extra device. You can just uh, use uh, your gateway as a thermostat, for instance. Also, you can interact uh, with a social web, like I made uh, the activity pub adapter, which is posting updates to Mastodon network. You can send updates uh, by email or use community uh, information online, like uh, OpenStreetMap. I think we made a hack with OpenStreetMap also. Let's say if you want to get some update about uh, the opening hours of some kind of shops, that's something do doable. And you can uh, do uh, all kind of logic between uh, all the things, try to uh, automate them. You can uh, do some condition using a calendar, for instance, or timer, clock. 
and uh, you can also deploy a voice adapter which is using a uh, Mozilla Deep, Deep Speech. So here's a short demonstration about uh, the activity tab. You get an idea about how does it work. So I can do some voiceover. So I'm turning on this uh, uh, matrix LED. I can control the, the color, turning on and off and so on. And uh, this has been done using the adapter. Here I'm using a, another adapter like this Activity Pub adapter. So it's installing now. It will be able to uh, post to my master network. Let's say if I'm away and I want to send a notification to my neighbor to check something or to uh, if some, my sensor is uh, uh, detecting something that can be valuable for the community, it can be used. So, so once it's installed, you need to configure it. So here is a Mastodon uh, configuration. So I need to issue a token for uh, connecting to my uh, social um, account. So I need to create an application. This is not specific to WebSync. This is a Mastodon. So I have a token for this application. So if I'm copying this token to my add-on, it will be uh, able to use my account as a client. Uh, let's get back to my dashboard. So here I'm adding a new element like uh, this uh, activity pub uh, device. Um, it's not an actuator because it can, it can work as well as a sensor. So I'm fixing the name, I'm adding a, an image for display and here it is. So if I'm getting into it, there is only a single property, which is a text. And if I'm changing this text property, and uh, in a second, it will uh, update uh, to my Mastodon uh, feed. So this has been done uh, manually, but I can also do some kind of automation. So I'm using here another add-on, which is a follower add-on. I have uh, modified it a bit to, to make some kind of uh, connection to yeah, use a matrix LED as a display for my latest uh, updates on my Fediverse uh, feed. And uh, it works uh, both sides because if I'm going to my Mastodon account, so this is application if you want to get started, but let's reply to my uh, latest uh, uh, tooth. So if I'm answering, uh, no, it's not an actuator, it's also a sensor and I'm pressing it from the web. Then if I'm looking at the property, it will update in a second and it will also be copied to this uh, other web thing, which is a sense at for the Raspberry Pi. So the, if you want to join uh, our community, so that's pretty easy. So usually it was, you had originally, had originally it was a Mozilla project and now it's moving to a community, its own community. So the portal is a websync.io. Um, in a few days, you probably saw more content but you can uh, get uh, access to the source code and all the side uh, project. And you can, if you need some kind of support, don't hesitate to, to join the chat room. We are using Matrix and the forum is also uh, open if you need more async uh, support. It's some still on Mozilla. Uh, you are free uh, to work to join. And to get started, um, you can try to look at uh, what's uh, Add-on has been shared to the community. There are some devices, some services, and it's a good way to get started. And uh, now I can also mention about a relative experiment because I believe that WebSync, uh, it has been created to address some smartphone uh, use case, but it's flexible enough to do more than that. So let me share some experiment I've been doing uh, for a couple of months now. It is, a, I call it the Web of Twins, how to make the Internet of Things uh, work uh, in, a, in a 3D world. So, so what you see here is the uh, same uh, Raspberry Pi with a sense at, and on the left I have this uh, 
virtual world uh, called uh, Mozilla Hubs. So it's a shared world where many users can join together. Here I'm joining uh, using a phone, but you can use also a VR headset and you have a very uh, good uh, immersive um, system. All users can join the same world and talk together because it's supporting voice. You can chat uh, to, with uh, other people. And what I wanted to do is trying to put a physical object inside uh, this virtual world, like uh, this uh, uh, toy house. Um, so I'm moving it uh, in a different, uh, in a reality, and it will be updated to each user's in a semi real time. So that uh, can be really convenient, especially if people are locked down and if they want to share some physical assets, we are not uh, uh, accessible because uh, only a few per person can stay in the uh, same room. So for instance, we are in this COVID situation where there is a lot of restriction. This is a kind of uh, technology that can be really interesting to push uh, this forward. So even if the, the actual thing is not existing, you can just use this, uh, uh, let's say, a virtual web thing as a, as a stub to uh, create uh, the application. So what we have on the, now on the bottom uh, web thing view is a view of uh, my sensor device I have on this uh, sensor so I can monitor the temperature, the pressure, and so on. So this is uh, some great uh, experimentation uh, hardware to get uh, started. Uh, now I think, uh, yeah, I can change the color to trigger some kind of uh, condition and actions and so on. So yeah, you can check the slide later. There is a couple of other demonstration and uh, you can get access to small links about uh, other demo. So we are near to the end of this presentation. So let me make a short recap. Uh, Privacy rely on the trust of your infrastructure, basically. So if uh, something you are running in your home and inside a place you trust, it can be more um, a better choice. The web itself is something decentralized and extensible. And uh, so we were able to um, address IoT use case using this uh, WebSync platform. It's something for made a uh, smart home, so you can connect all your devices in a safe way. It's easy to interact and automate uh, them. And it's extensible to address some more use case like interact with uh, any other services online or even to remote things and so on. And uh, I believe that the WebSync API is simple enough uh, and flexible to uh, uh, address other use cases like uh, this web of thin experiment. There is also the microblock uh, project, which can be really interesting if you want to target uh, uh, academics or schools to get started and uh, have, to have physical feedback about your their things. That's something interesting. And play, mixing um, Internet of Things and VR, that's something uh, really fun to do. And you can use this uh, Mozilla Hub project also as a platform. Um, so now I can share more, more details of if there is any question. I can, okay, there are some questions in the chat room. Um, what other supported transport later, like the one I am supported? Um, okay, so LP1. So I hacked uh, some kind of uh, web thing using a lower one uh, device I have. Um, the problem is that we are it's not a technical issue about uh, integration because it's well designed. The problem is about the more the semantics, like uh, you know, that like, uh, LP1 is usually a restricted payload, so some so it could make sense to use uh, uh, something binary and something uh, standardized. So there are some effort. Uh, I know that, uh, yeah, open connectivity, for instance, try to address this, but if you are want to do this. Um, for your own uh, use case, that's totally doable. If you are creating your own uh, format, it's just, just uh, easy to implement. Uh, yeah, I believe that any other uh, protocol should be able to be used. So the problem is uh, more now integration side. 
So if you can connect it to the gateway itself, like if you are using a serial uh, um, adapter, for instance, my LoRa one was a modem using a UART, I can connect to it, so that's not a problematic, but if you want to connect several, maybe it could make sense to have another device that will implement the WebSync API, so this way you can have a, a seamless uh, experience. The question will be just about to align as a description about uh, what uh, you're going to, uh, to uh, transport. So basically I would say it's not that difficult because we are always speaking about the same thing. For instance, the temperature is temperature, but probably there are many standards which are describing temperatures and on way. So you need to pick one and try to align. Uh, for this, Mozilla is uh, proposing their own uh, schemas. Uh, it's uh, something made by the community. Uh, I know that also there is a proposal on schema.org and uh, the web PC is also trying to address this. So from a community point of view, you can try to propose something that align your use case and translate it to uh, the web uh, way to do it. So if you can fit in a JSON description, you're fine. Uh, I'm looking back if there's any other questions. Um, I think there are some focus issues with this application. Sometimes it's telling my focus. But uh, I'm uh, I'm far uh, the, yeah, I'm two minutes late, sorry for that. And if you want to uh, watch more demos and video, you can just bookmark this link. You get some uh, access to the video of my presentation. And thanks a lot. And uh, goodbye. Now I'm turning it off. And uh, see you at uh, WebSync channels. Bye bye.